Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Inside Secrets of the Caribbean. My name is Ria. I am your host. And today I'm very pleased to welcome Lynn Burma. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Great. Now, let me introduce you. You're originally from Dallas, Texas. You are now currently on the island of Anguilla, uh, and you have been since 1995. And you're quite a well-known artist in the area. Um, tell us a bit about your backstory. What, you know, what got you into art? What, what was it about art that just sort of made you go, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to be? Okay, so the art, the actual fine art, came after two other semi-related careers, where at the beginning I studied at university and I was in the field of landscape architecture which was, you know, you know, design based, graphic, two dimensional work. Um, from there, I went on to architectural illustration, which was also two dimensional work perspective and um, more like renderings and buildings and all that. Um, from there, I moved into the fine art. Um, it, so it's almost as if the thread was a little bit more technical to a little bit less and less technical and more free and being able to develop, you know, final uh, products from something that I personally was in, interested in. So, so yeah, art came at the end, but now it's been my, my profession for over 25 years. And what was it about the Caribbean that was when you got there, and you, I, I know that you went there to do exhibitions and you've done that over the past, but what was it specifically that you found in Anguilla that was just that magic, this is where I'm going to be and this is where I can create the best that I've ever created in my life? Anguilla is just such a special place. Um, I, I don't know if I can even describe exactly the feeling, but there's just, it's just, it's a small island it's quietish, it's calm. Um, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a um, arid island, so it's not mountainous. So it's almost as if it's just completely open, this feeling of openness. And um, then the, the arid climate is very comfortable for me. Um, so it's just a feeling of freedom, um, simplicity, um, you know, the quality, obviously the quality of the air, the sea, um, just like a place to, you can really chill and not be too distracted by like being in a city, you know, where there's just, you know, so I, I felt as if I felt the elements and I felt it's a place where I could focus and just in, enjoy. Well, and I have to say, behind you is one of your paintings. And of course, it is reminiscent, yes, of, uh, <laughs> you know, the water, as you said, and the open spaces. The one thing I have to ask is where the goats come from, because you have a series of goats and boats. Where do the goats come from? How do they sort of apply to these beautiful sailboats on, on the sea? Well, it's a 25-year it's a um, love affair with goats because from the first time I landed on the island, I started a series of goats. And since then, I mean, there's loads of goats on the island. They're, they're wandering, you, you know, there's families, different neighborhoods. Um, and I find them very attractive. You know, all goats aren't created equal. So, but the goats <laughs> on this island, <laughs> the goats on this island have a, a anatomy structure that's very, angular and very, I don't know, very attractive. And then the coloring and the, the way that they kind of pierce, they have this piercing look at you, at you. And they, they, it's almost as if they, they look like they can see right through you. They know you, you know, so they've just always caught my attention. So over the years, I've painted goats in all different settings. You know, there's the goats in grass, the goats in coconuts, the goats, um, what else? Um, in the fields, just all these different scenarios with goats. Um, then, actually, it almost had to do with the COVID and the lockdown. 
in a way because um, all of a sudden I've got a commission for um, an apartment, well, a, a, a condo, and she wanted um, something. The theme of the whole building is nautical. So I don't really do nautical. You, you do see the sea and the sky in this painting, but normally I don't do beaches. I don't do the sea. I just, it's something I haven't done that much in the past because the, the sea here, the colors are so unbelievably brilliant and strong that I don't feel that I can capture them correctly with paint. And when I, if you, tr if I try, it looks kind of fake because it's just so unbelievable. So anyway, um, I had to come up with a nautical theme. I was playing around with uh, ideas. Um, I was coming up with um, ropes and knots and ropes and this infinity shape and, you know, so I guess I wasn't that excited about. So then I have to say, honestly, I was kind of frustrated. I took a walk on the beach. I ran into a couple of friends I know and we were walking and I'm telling them my frustration with I have to come up with a nautical theme and I can't, you know, get there. And my friend just blurted out goats and boats. And so it's not even an original idea, but I it, don't mind admitting that. Um, she just said goats and boats and it just got my attention. And then I went back to the studio and, you know, started sketching ideas and, and I thought this is, this could work because goats are, you know, everyone knows about the goats on the island. The boat races are extremely popular, popular. And so the two together is just very Anguilla and can be nautical. So that's, that's how it started. And now, is your painting, is it oil, uh, acrylic, watercolors, or do you have any favorite type that you use, or is it just anything that strikes your fancy at the moment? It, it kind of depends on the, um, the subject, what it lends, it, sometimes it lends itself to um, oil, this, the ghosts and boats are oil, um, sometimes acrylic, sometimes watercolor, it kind of just depends on what I'm painting, um, that feels like, okay, this is the medium for that. Well, it's absolutely amazing. It really did catch my attention. Um, we've got all the websites, which we'll make sure to, you know, provide the links to that. You also have a virtual exhibition and you have done more than one. Um, let me ask you, is that something that was born out of COVID or is that something that you have been doing prior? No, that had to do with COVID. When we were locked down, obviously no uh, visitors coming to the island, no traffic in the gallery. Um, I came across this company that I've been working with for some exhibitions and they were offering online exhibitions. And so I just checked it out and I did it. I just plugged everything in and I um, decided to show this, my work online in that way. It's a, vir yes, you can, you, it's a virtual exhibition where you can go through the gallery and everything's hung and it's, so it's, and how yeah, have you found that nice compared to an actual, you know, in gallery viewing, have you found that that ex has expanded your customer base? I did get some, some um, mileage out of it. Um, I, I don't know if so much it expanded it, honestly. Um, but I did have some people, you know, find it or I, I did announce it and people went there and um, I did have a couple sales from, from the exhibition. Well, and currently you've actually just been put under another lockdown. Um, what do you see the future for you in, uh, going forward? Do you expect that within a few weeks or months that things are going to start to go back to normal and you'll be able to open the gallery back up again? And will you continue to do the virtual showrooms or the virtual ex exhibitions when you are able to open your gallery back up? Well, the virtual exhibition is still up and I just I'll keep it there because even though we weren't locked down and now, and hopefully it won't last that long, we'll be open again. We still don't have a lot of traffic on the island. It's been, you know, slow coming, which is good because the government has monitored and um, set up many protocols to keep it under control. So I will probably keep going with the virtual just so if somebody's interested and they can't come here, they can at least see everything online. And um, yeah, so this lockdown came as a big surprise because we were doing so well. 
Um, I believe they've caught it in time to um, to to control, and we should be open. I think in a couple of weeks. Well, that's good news because I know you know that's the last thing people want is for things to be shut down. What do you have any great big projects coming up for yourself in the future? Something that you're sort of looking forward to and excited about? I'm very much looking forward to um, exhibiting at Art Basel Miami, as I was last year. Looking forward to it, but uh, it was uh, canceled. So um, that's coming up. It's not till this. It's not until December, but I will be showing in that. It's the first week of December in Miami, and um, I'll be showing. I prepared paintings from my um, hat series which is a fun series that I started a few years ago with, it's all, the theme is all about hats and mostly Panama hats or big um, sun hats and a little bit, um, not abstract, but looking at hats a little bit different way. So that's coming up. Um, besides, and then I'm hoping, and I'm, it's not set in stone, but um, there should be a show coming up in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. That won't be till 2022, but I'm already kind of thinking ahead for that. And in the meantime, I will just keep producing in my studio and uh, see what happens before um, Miami and just keep, keep, um, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I think that's the best we can all do. And now I understand, obviously, you do commissions then, but as well, you have your gallery, you have your online gallery. So if anybody is interested in taking a look at your artwork or commissioning any piece, um, they can always contact you or go online. Oh, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, you know what, Lynn, I thank you ever so much for your time. Um, and I want to tell the viewers out there that we will definitely put all of the links so that you go, you can go and check out not only the virtual exhibition, but um, she's also got quite a bit of information about herself and her various bits of artwork online. It's well worth a read. I really enjoyed reading it. So thank you for that. Thank you so much, Ria. Nice chatting with you. You as well. You've been watching another edition of Inside Secrets of the Caribbean. This has been Lynn Birnbaum. She is from Anguilla, originally from Dallas, Texas. Please check her out. My name is Rhea. I've been your host. We'll see you again next week. <music>